Coming up on today's Airborne, Bell introduces the new Bell 505 Jet Ranger X. Albuquerque is bidding for the World Ballooning Championships. And the MV-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft is confirmed for EAA Air Venture 2014. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Well, the details have been rumored for months, but there's a new Jet Ranger in the world, and it wants its share of the market, captured by Robinson Helicopters' highly successful R66. The new Bell 505 Jet Ranger X is a five-seat single-engine turbine helicopter with a cruise speed of 125 knots a range of 360 nautical miles, and a useful load of 1,500 pounds. The Bell 505 is designed to be a multi-mission helicopter, designed to meet a wide variety of missions with a fully flat floor, increased cabin volume, and clamshell doors. The Bell 505 Ranger X features a Garmin G1000H integrated avionics suite and is powered by a Turbo Mecha Arius 2R engine with dual-channel, full-authority digital engine control. The Bell 505 features a high-inertia rotor system. The new Bell 505 Jet Ranger X is scheduled for first flight late this year, while Bell reports that it has begun signing letters of intent for the new aircraft at Heli Expo. The city of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and the Balloon Federation of America is inviting the world's hot air ballooning community to return to the land of enchantment for the 2016 World Hot Air Balloon Championship. The Duke City is one of the two sites bidding for the host role. The other is Saga, Japan. Albuquerque is already considered by most as the world center of ballooning as it's host to the annual Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta each October, which is the largest hot air ballooning event in the world. If the Albuquerque bid is accepted, it's anticipated that the world competition will begin the week prior to the annual balloon fiesta. A delegation from the BFA in Albuquerque will journey to Lausanne, Switzerland in March to make a formal presentation to the annual meeting of the Federation Aeronautic International's Ballooning Commission. A decision is expected to be announced by the close of that meeting. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Augusta Westland announced that it has completed AW609 tilt rotor flight envelope expansion trials, allowing the certification testing phase to commence as it makes progress towards FAA certification in 2017. This was achieved with the first two test aircraft, which have now together flown almost 1,000 hours, with over a third having been flown in the last two years since the FAA type certification program was transferred to Augusta Westland Tilt Rotor Company. The envelope expansion phase tested every aspect of the aircraft's capabilities and has validated the flight envelope, including the 25,000 feet service ceiling with a pressurized cabin and a maximum cruise speed of 275 knots, both of which were performed at the aircraft's maximum weight. 
Other trials completed with the AW609 tilt rotor in 2013 included slope landings, run-on landings, aeroelastic stability testing, and high-altitude stability testing. The program now enters a new phase of dedicated certification activity to demonstrate compliance to the type certification basis, which was finalized with the FAA in late 2013. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've been, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. This week's classic video shows us how to relax in the ultimate rocking chair, a powered parachute. Search Seated on the Edge of Forever, a PPC's bird's eye view on Aero TV's news channel. Stand by for more fun at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2014. The U.S. Marine Corps MV-22 Osprey, one of the world's most unique military aircraft, will return. The MV-22 will be on display at the event and also give demonstrations of its exceptional flying capabilities. The Osprey is making its first appearance at Oshkosh since 2010. This appearance, however, is the first time the aircraft will perform its full Level 3 flight demonstration at the event. It's making only nine such airshow appearances in the U.S. this year. Exact arrival, demonstration, and departure dates for the aircraft at Oshkosh will be announced as they are finalized. If you had to plan your trip to EAA AirVenture based on watching exciting flight demonstrations, seeing the Osprey in operation should be at the top of your list. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. An EAA-supported bill to limit liability exposure for owners of private airports passed both chambers of the Wisconsin Legislature this week and is awaiting signature by Governor Scott Walker. Jonathan Harger, EAA Government Advocacy Specialist, said, quote, this legislation permits landowners in Wisconsin to allow the public onto their land for the purpose of recreational aviation activities without the risk of crippling financial exposure should a participant become injured, end quote. With this shield from liability, the EAA believes that owners will be far less likely to close airports because of financial planning concerns and more likely to welcome the public onto their airports. EAA had testified before the Wisconsin Legislature in support of the measure. Earlier this year, the FAA implemented FAR 117, which established strict rest requirements for pilots of passenger airline flights. However, these rules don't apply to cargo pilots. The Airline Pilots Association International, ALPA, has once again reiterated its support for immediate passage of the Safe Skies Act of 2013 that would end the cargo carve-out and help ensure that every pilot is a well-rested pilot. 
Captain Lee Moak, president of ALPA, said, quote, As we learn more about the events leading to the UPS crash in Birmingham, Alabama, it's becoming more apparent that separate rest requirements for cargo and passenger pilots is unsustainable, unsupportable, and unconscionable, end quote. This comment came after the issue of pilot fatigue was brought up during the ongoing NTSB accident investigation of the UPS Flight 1354 crash. ALPA has long maintained that the new flight and duty time limits and minimum rest requirements must cover all airline pilots. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.